numbers are victims of brainwashing. Our second premise is some members of the Democratic Party are victims of brainwash. This one's already make, uh, making my, my wife's dad smile, I imagine. Next one. Therefore, some members of the Democratic Party are cult members. Now, don't get yourself uh, hung up with, with whether or not the premises are true or false here, because recall that validity isn't a matter of the truth or falsity of the premises. Uh, it's a matter of the structure of the argument. So let's get this down to the basics of the structure and get rid of all the words, because they don't really matter when it comes to validity. Here we have the structure, all C, R, V. Some D, we'll call it members of the Democratic Party, are V, victims of brainwashing. Therefore, some D, members of the Democratic Party, are cult members. Now you notice that this is a standard form categorical syllogism. We have three terms, each used twice, but not in the same premise. Our major uh, term our, our major premise is where it ought to be, and our minor term, our minor premise is where it ought to be, and we also have our, uh, our middle term. Now the moving figure of this one are A, I, I, and where the uh, middle term is the predicate of both major and minor premise, we have figure two. It's A, I, I, two. Now recall that if we demonstrate that this AII syllogism is valid, then all AII2 syllogisms are valid because it's a matter of structure. Now let's Venn diagram this one. And you might recall that this one's going to have a slightly different wrinkle than, than the last ones we've done. The last ones we've done uh, only incorporated universal uh, premises. So we were shading in areas where there were no members. We're now going to be talking about particulars, so we'll be placing an X in the area in which we know that there are members. Let's get down to it. Before my ink runs out. C, V, and D. All right. All C or V, and but this is just a bit of advice moving forward. Anytime you have two premises, one's universal and one is particular, always diagram the universal premise first, because it will show you the area in which there are no members. Thus, you ought never to entertain placing an X there. So always do the universal premise first. So all C or V is going to look like this. And by this time, I think doing A statements ought to be like clockwork. We've seen it over and over again. So this is all C or B. Now, let's do some D or V. Hmm. I'm starting to run into trouble here. Some D or V would be this entire football-shaped thing designated by areas 5 and 6. But I'm not sure if it's going to be in this section or this section or both. Where there's any uncertainty about where the X belongs, we put it on the line. Don't think I mentioned this before, but if the X is placed on the line, you can know pretty much from the get-go that this one is going to be invalid. Reason being, 
that when we deal with deductive validity, we deal in certainties. My statement that I'm not sure where the x actually belongs was a statement of uncertainty. So I'm not sure if the x goes in 5 or 6, because both of those are sec sections that say sum d or b. So can I conclude that sum d or c? No, I can't. This one is invalid because I'm not sure if there are any members in sector, sector 5 or not. I'm not sure if it's in here. I'm not sure if it's in here. I'm not sure if it's in both. So this one is invalid. Now just to show you the importance of where the middle term is placed, my next uh, exercise will also be an AII mood syllogism, but we're just going to change the figure a little bit. So this next one I'm going to be giving you is going to be an AII 3 syllogism. And let me write, write this one down for you. I don't have much of the sense of humor, but I try to have a little bit of fun with the sense of humor that I do have with, with these. Here we go. All red wine drinkers are consumers of vital nutrients. My health magazines are telling me that this is in fact true at this point. Uh, I'm not about to dispute it. My second premise is going to be some red wine drinkers are alcoholics. I mean, I'm afraid that statement's probably true as far as I know, too. Therefore, some alcoholics are consumers of vital nutrients. So, okay. We can abbreviate this as R for red wine drinkers. Consumers of vital nutrients, we can call that N. And alcoholics is easy, we can just make it A. So we've got all R N, some R R A, therefore some A R N. Now let's, let's diagram this one. And via this one, you're going to see just how important the placement of the middle term is. As a matter of fact, it ends up making much of the difference between validity and invalidity. Now we're going to our first premise is like so. All red wine drinkers are consumers of vital nutrients. And our X, let's place this X. Maybe I should use red this time since we're talking about red wine. Some red wine drinkers are alcoholics. The one place where there's out both A and R is 5. You don't put it in 7 because 7 would be alcoholics but not red wine drinkers. We put it in 5 because that's some red wine drinkers who are also alcoholics. Now, we can read our diagram for validity. Therefore, can we conclude that some alcoholics are consumers of vital nutrients? The answer is absolutely. Because here's our some alcoholic, also happens to be a member of N, the class of those who are consumers of vital nutrients. This one's valid. Now you notice that placing, placement of the X can sometimes be uh, a challenging endeavor, but with practice, uh, you know, you, you'll get used to it. Now let me give you one more uh, example, just because I haven't even mentioned 
O statements yet, in case you haven't noticed. So let's just do one more here, and we'll wrap up this, this segment. Let's wrap this one up. And I'm not going to use words, I'm just going to use letters here. Our first premise is going to be an E statement. No P or Q. Second premise will be some P or R. Therefore, can we conclude that some R are not P? So the mood and the figure of this one are E, I, O, and our middle term is here. That's again our good friend figure three. Now let's diagram this one. Changing it up with red, that's about as much of excitement as you get here. First one's an E statement, no P or Q. No P's are also part of the class of things Q. Bingo. Now, some P are R. So we're going to be placing an X where there is P but also R. And if you recall, this segment here was P but also R. But we've already shaded out five. So there's only one place to put the X, and that's in segment four. That some P are R. Now we read the diagram. How we simultaneously diagram some R are not P. Or, yeah. So as we said, some R are not P. No! Oh no, I screwed that up. Can you put it back?